Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I do hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video. This is on the uh, 146 Professional version 2. It's just been released on the Just Flight website. Well actually it released on the 4th of April. Uh, for PC currently only at the moment but hopefully this will come to the marketplace and you'll have the version 2 for Xbox and PC hopefully soon in this video i'm going to show you a couple of the different changes a couple of different changes with the efb there and certainly a change oops with the flight management system i'll be showing you all this in this video and even some new toys to play with a music player you've got new sounds a new sort of cabin oh more toys there a new cabin setup too i'll be giving you a a tour of this in this video and also in this video I'm gonna do a quick tutorial flight in this new updated version 2 of the 146 so there's a lot to be getting on with so let's not dilly dally let's get on with this video Okay, we're situated at Leeds Bradford Airport, the Orbex version. I'll put my link to my review down below in the description for this fabulous little airport. Fantastic. I'm in turnaround mode. As you can see, I've got the uh, passenger door opened and the stairs down. Let's just jump in the cockpit here. Something that came in. Now, I don't remember this being in version 1. You've got this on your EFB, your tablet here. You've got this start boarding. Now I've downloaded my SimBrief profile and I'll go into this later. I'm just gonna set up a flight between Bradford and London Heathrow. And you've got this start boarding thing here. Now, I do, like I said, I don't remember this from version one. It may have been, I just didn't play with it. But you can put this start boarding, you can have it the passengers boarding I've got 90 passengers ready to come on have them boarding in five minutes 10 minutes 20 minutes instant which I don't suggest you do if you want to explore all that this version 2 has to offer all realistic let's go realistic start boarding and hopefully you can hear this in the background But you've got passengers boarding. Now, let's just switch you. I've just got quick view set up. So you don't actually see them boarding unless you have, uh, is it GSX, Ground Services X installed. That's a PC mod. Uh, hopefully, I don't, it may come to Xbox at some point, but it's only for PC. If you've got GSX, apparently you can see the passengers boarding and all that good stuff. We don't have that. I may get it in the future. But let's show you some of the neat features with this version 2 upgrade. Now, if we go to this little music player here, I'm going to turn off shuffle and put this to the first tune. And these tunes are supplied with the 146. Is that playing? It is now. Let's go back to the captain's seat. You can hear the passengers boarding. And as you can see here, boarding realistic. So we're 16% in realistic, seven passengers boarding. It's boarding the passengers and the cargo, which is neat. And we've got music playing in the background. Just turn around. I'll show you more of the passengers, the upgrade. Just want to go to my FMS here, flight management system. Now, this is a change. This is a new flight management system, which I'll be showing you. I'm going to power it on. When you power it on for the first time, it will go through all the different passes, CPU, RAM for the FMS, uh, database, uh, and this will update to 100% and hopefully go green. Should be no problem. Pass, yep. Yeah. And these will pass. And there you go. And then you 
I've already done it. First time you do this, it'll say accept your initial position type of thing. That's where we're at at the moment. But just show you, I'll come back to this later. If I show you this part though, passengers boarding, you can see we've got 12 passengers so far. If we look at our EFB, that should marry up. Now we've got 13. There you go, and that will just keep continue. The zero fuel weight will continue to climb as we the passengers board and the cargo's boarding. Isn't that neat? I just think that's fantastic. Anyway, we'll go to this part. Let's show you. I've got various fuels set up. Do you fancy some coffee, chaps? Let's turn this on. And go brew. And this will brew us. You'll hear different noises as this kettle brews. So cabin crew, I'm giving you some coffee. Let's just come back a little bit here. You've got some lights here as well. And this is new. I'm going to show you. A lot of this has been redesigned for version 2. So if I start flicking some lights, this turns off this light where we're stood at the moment. This light turns off the backlight down there. Flick that back on. You can see it's back lit up. We can flick some of these lights to turn. So passengers, don't worry if you're boarding. I'm just testing all the lights. They're all fine, aren't they? And there's a couple more lights there. Turn them back on while they're boarding. And if we go here, it's different switches you can flick. Heaters for the toilets. Better turn them on. I think they were on. Well, they're on now, possibly. Reading lights. Toilet. <laughs> water. <laughs> better keep them on. You've got these doors. Now, this door saying that door's open. Oops, let's just zoom out a bit. Saying that door's open, which is correct. If I open this door, click on this knob, or oh, sorry, on the handle, the door will open. You'll see the lights will light up for the back of the aircraft. If I open the back doors, the lights will light up there. I won't do it, but I'm sure you can get the idea. I'll close that door. We don't need that open. And those lights will extinguish. Is that brewing? Oops, let's go back there. Is that neat? You can hear the hot water going. So the passengers are still boarding. Let's show you some of this cabin while we're here. Get to the centre. I've just got some quick view set up. You can see the nice new textures on the seats. They've even designed it. Now apparently this is realistic. If you get these seats, Apparently you get them possibly at a discounted price, maybe, hopefully. Because all you're getting, because the engines are so low, all you're getting is an engine view down there. Which is not great, so you just get a view of the engines. If you sat in this seat, you don't even get a view out the window. And you can see you get less, less cabin space. Although these look longer, perhaps, than them. So it's shorter, but longer, by the looks of it. It's a shame you can't click on these to open them. And there's not more clickable spots. But still, apparently that, that is the way the 146 is designed. So these cabin, overhead cabin spaces are shorter than these. And you've got a lower ceiling here as well. Isn't that great? And you can set up wing views there if you want to. Got another view set up for the end of the cabin. It's just to get us there a bit quicker. Go forward, you've got a toilet there. Still hear the music playing in the background. Can open this door, of course. Let passengers on in the back. I wonder, does this have stairs? Maybe the 146 only has forward stairs. I think by the looks of it, it does. I don't see any stairs there, so we'll close that door. It's not great. So you've got all these different... And you got a PA system here as well. Let's just get to the side here. There we go. Uh, some PA systems. Sting the pilot. It's a cabin. Crew call. And all kinds of stuff you can play with. You can't pick up the phone. That's a shame. So there you go. Let's just take us back to the sensor cabin. And you can play around with these. Anyway, let's get back in the cockpit. So we'll get back down. I want to show you a bit more of this new FMS system. So you've got the fuel page here. By the way, as you look around, I think they've updated the textures around the aircraft as well. You can see a few more scuffs and scrapes. 
given that edge of realism. I mean, my goodness, the 146 Professional was simply one of the better looking aircrafts in its original form. Now with this update, they've really made it shine even more. It's incredible. So a few more added texturing going on there. We're on the fuel page. Let's get to our flight plan page. Now, we don't have any flight plan set up. If you wanted to, you can input a flight plan automatically. What else you can also do, if I click on there, you can copy a flight plan. Now, I'll get to this. I'm going to have to cut you to the desktop in a moment to show you this. But you can go to uh, copy flight plan here. And if you've got one in a folder on your hard drive, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment, you can click on it and then enter it it will actually put it into your FMS so you've got the flight plan ready for you. I'd better go and show you that part now. Okay, so the passengers are still boarding. That's almost done. Now I've got you in... I'll leave this running so the passengers board, but I've got you in desktop mode. So I can show you my sim brief profile. This is how you're going to load flights into your FMS in the version 2 146. So I've got mine open. I've just set up a flight between Leeds Bradford and Heathrow Airport. If I go to edit flight, you can copy this. Uh, use current time, we don't need to change that. So depart from EGNM, arrive EGLL, and it should fill this in automatically, but departure airport is runway 14 at EGNM, arrival 9 right at Heathrow Airport. And if you just go to suggested routes, view all, this is the one I've got selected. So it's Paul 2X, and you can read the rest of that to yourself, for yourself. And CF09L, just before we get into Heathrow Airport. So it's this one I've got selected. This should come up for you too. Just select that one. And um, we can go to generate it then. Go to generate flight, and you get to this page. So you view the flight. Keep this in mind, initial altitude, that will be our cruise altitude, flight level 190, 19,000 feet. So there you go, that's all in. When you've done that, to get it into your flight management system, go to flight plan downloads. And if this is not open, you'd, so flight plan downloads, just go to show details, scroll down. So flight plan downloads, scroll down so you see just flight. If you got the 146, well, this should show anyway on Sim Brief. You would download that flight plan. That's how you download it. Once you've downloaded it, you need to go to your go to your community folder. If you've updated the 146 to version 2, go in your community folder, go to just flight aircraft 146. Go into that folder, go into documents. And then it will give you all the documents. And it will show you you've got a new EFB document. A new professional document for the 146 itself. Going over all the features of the 146. And an operations manual here for the FMS. This is the one rather I want to show you. Just show you the cabin music licenses as I'm playing them in the background. So there you go. Just to give them their credit. So all the music you can hear playing are made by these people. Well, that'll be a nice touch to show you. Let's go into this operations manual here. And it will show you. Now, how do we do this? There's a page here where you can load flight plan imports. Let's click on that. And it will show you. Read through this. It will tell you how to do it. It will give you a location of where, when you've downloaded the flight plan from Simbrief, like I've just showed you, it will give you a location of where to put it. I'll show you it step by step here where mine is. Yours possibly will be in a similar situation. I've got my flight sim on drive A, but it's actually drive C. You need to put your RT in your downloaded sim brief flight plan into. So it's drive C. For me, it's users, James, app data. And you can read all this at the top here. I'll put this down in the description as well roaming this is what it is for me microsoft flight sim packages i believe uh, just fly aircraft 146 work just fly again 
and flight plans. Don't worry if that went too fast, I'll put this down in the description. This seems to be the default path for it, so no matter where you've got Flight Sim installed, this seems to be the default path. Then you put your downloaded Sim Brief plan into this flight plan into this folder. And you can see I've got mine there. So what we'll do now, with that all done, I'll jump back into the aircraft. Just one thing there, I don't know how this will work when this version 2 comes out on Xbox. I can't see a way of actually getting your flight plans in, into Xbox. So I'm not sure, but I'll show you a bit of a workaround with, for that. Let's jump back into the aircraft. Okay, now back in the aircraft. Now, all the passengers are boarded and I've got all the engines just to expedite things a little bit, make things a little bit quicker. I've got all the aircraft started up and the engines started up, proper or not, just to make things a little bit quicker. What am I doing? I want to go to my FMS. I, I tell you what, while we're there, I'm going to open... Yeah, open the captain's door and turn back on this music, just so we got a bit of music. I'll keep these doors closed, the passengers are boarded now. So you can still hear the music in the background while we're setting up here. I'll go down to my... Press the right button, Hudson. So there you go. Following the previous step, now we've got this route, so it would be in flight plans. When you get to this page, you might have to click on one first, but it should come up there and copy... Uh, P-L-T-R-T-E. So you're just going to copy it into the FMS. Click on this. If you've got something in that folder, like I showed you before, I have. Just, instead of clicking here, you now select number one down here. So we're selecting one and enter. Like I said, this FMS is a little bit different. And there you go. Quick as that, it's put us our route into our FMS. It's not put in our SID. We're going to have to do that manually. And we're going to say we've got clearance from, and then flight plan summary there, we've got clearance from ATC for our SID, so we can put that in. Just before I do that, if you don't like this, and you prefer the old FMS, you can click on aircraft selection here, so make sure you've got aircraft selected. Click on this little cog, and you can go here. FMS options, you can have it in Classic, which is the one we've got. That's the one that came with the 146. Or the previous one, Modern. If I, hopefully I've not messed something up here now. So there you go, that's the old version. Probably the version you're used to with the original 146. I prefer the new Modern one now, to be honest. I'm getting to grips with it. There's a lot more information that you can look on that, which I'll be showing you in this video. So I'm going to pull it back to Classic. And like I said, I hope I've not... <sighs> Click on the right button, Hudson. Yeah, seems like all the flight plans are still in. Let's get on with this, Hudson. Let's put a star in here. While we're on a flight plan page, click on Menu. And we'll click on Depart. Remember from our previous sim brief, we want to depart from runway 14. So we'll select one on the keypad here and enter. 14. Remember, it's Pole 2X, our SID. So we're going to select number three and enter. I mean, if we go to flight plan here, click on this button where flight plan. It's now entered our SID information. It's even give us some altitude uh, readings here as well. So our initial climb will be 3,500. Then once we've cleared that, we'll then continue to climb to flight level 190. Go to next, it will give us the rest of the legs. If you want to check that, there is a very rudimentary flight plan page on this sort of weather radar screen here. It's not very clear though. If we click out, is that not zoot ranging out? Okay, doesn't matter. There's a very rudimentary uh, map reading there. Now that seems to have clicked off. Never mind, come back to that later. I'm not quite sure what's going on there. Best way to check it is go to your VFR map. You can do it from the top menu. I've just got float installed. Just going to check that flight plan. You probably have this in modern day 146 if you were flying it. There you go. That's our SID going to Paul. And then coming into Heathrow Airport. We won't put a star in. We'll just use uh, ILS here to lock onto runway 9. ILS runway 9 once we get down here. I'll be showing you that later, but the flight plan seems to be fine. 
So no problem there. What I'm going to do, push back truck is right in front of me. We'll call that in. I'll push back and taxi to runway 14 and I'll join you there. Now then, we're just at the holding point for runway 14 at the wonderful Leeds Bradford Airport. Doesn't it look great? By the way, that's the Air We Go livery I've got on the 146. That's from the virtual airline I'm in. Video down in the description about the virtual airline. I think one of our friends from Discord, Retriever Neil, has just joined us in there. So it's great to have you. Still got that music playing. Tell you what I'm going to do. Let's go up here now. Sorry, chaps. We're about to take off, so I'm going to... All very realistic, isn't it? From Hudson here, not really. <laughs> Close the cabin door there. There we go. So the pilots are now isolated. And what we'll do, we're going to set up the aircraft now if you want to follow along. So remember, our initial climb altitude will be 3,500 feet for our SID. And then we'll continue to climb 19,000 19, feet. Arm that. We're going to click on area navigation down here so it follows our flight plan click that knob up click on LNAV we're going to arm that so when we activate autopilot it should follow our flight plan and we can set the rest up later I believe I've got everything else set up I'm just going to check flaps 18 so take off flaps first stage of flaps we can remove that checklist there it's all very nice but we don't need that at the moment and let's get going. So a bit of thrust to get us moving there. Don't need much in this 146. It will actually start moving with the power of those engines on idle thrust, I've noticed. Which is a bit scary if you don't realise. Take your parking brake off and if you've got your engines up and running, you'll be off. <laughs> so I don't believe anybody is around. Shame, not a lot of people seem to use. I am on a live server. Don't see that many people at Leeds Bradford, which is a shame. It's a beautiful airport. It's one I'm using quite a lot. So there we go. We'll just get on to the runway here. And then we'll just go full throttle. I've got the landing lights on. So you should get the pilot call outs as well. All set up, I hope, correctly. Ah, there's a couple more things you can set up here, of course, to make it more realistic. There's probably a, one or two items I've missed, but just to make this easy for you to follow, as always. Alright, we'll get on this runway. Oh, bit of a pause there, wasn't I? Right, got full throttle. Speed alive, both sides. There we go. 80 knots, what's checked? Push your yoke forward so don't take off prematurely. Bit of a bumpy v runway, isn't it? Rotate. Rotate. V2. Up you come, aircraft. Could have set a bit of trim in there, never mind. No, sink. Yep, it's my fault. Not setting takeoff trim. Positive way to climb gear. Gears come up. There you go. And we're up. I'm flying, and soon it'll take take the flaps up. I didn't click on. That's one thing I missed. Click on click on this scorecard here. Basically sets your takeoff speed and uh, minimums that type of thing. Minimum speed. I can bring my flaps up. It's something I missed there. And what I'm going to do? I'm going to activate autopilot, and it should follow our course, lateral navigation course. Bring that throttle back a bit. I don't want to be getting past 250 knots below 10,000 feet. And it should climb us. Got enough virtual vertical speed there. It should climb us to 3,500. And once we get there... There you go. I've got the speed set about right there. Once we get there, we'll continue climbing to 19,000 feet. So if we come down to, well, let's get the right one, you can see what part of our SID we're on at the moment. So it's following this part. That warning is saying you're approaching your set speed here, 3,500 feet. So the, let's just bring that throttle back. It does like to zoom ahead this aircraft. I'm breaking rules here. There we go. Just 
spot it in time. So once we get to 3,500 feet. In fact, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to continue climbing to 19,000 feet. So move this to 19,000, which is our cruise altitude. And that should be fine. I'm going to climb a little bit quicker than this. Bring up my throttle to about 80%. Sync mode. Now what this will allow you to do, it will pause the autopilot temporary for you. I'll pull back on my yoke so I've got more vertical speed. Resync. Press that button again. It's basically afterburners on and off, I believe. Or toggle afterburners. It will resync it and it will sync me now to my new vertical speed, which is about 2,000 feet or just less per minute. Bring up that throttle a little bit more there. Our speed is fine. And now we're climbing to 19,000 feet. No flaps in, all flaps are in rather, so no flaps set. Landing gear up. And we're climbing, and our speed is doing okay. I might just have to watch that again. We're under. Does like to zoom ahead this aircraft. Just click on this card again. No. Click, 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 click on that card every so often, just so that our speeds are set correctly here. I'll show you that later coming into land. What we'll do, we'll just continue to climb to 19,000 feet there. Just gonna watch my speed so I don't overspeed below 10,000 feet. That's about right. That's all fine. Come down here, as you can see, about 250 knots, which is all good. We'll continue to climb to 19,000 feet, and I'll bring you back then. Okay, so we're just about to reach our cruise altitude. As you can see, we're just above the clouds. That was nice. There you go. So the buzzer should sound if I've not missed it being in external mode. Yeah, I think the buzzer sounded already. So when you get to your cruise altitude, just watch your speed because the vertical speed will lessen as it levels us out. As you can see here, it will level, level us out at 19,000 feet. So I'm going to watch my throttle here because I don't want to... Mind you, this 300 variant of the 146 can go pretty quick, so I'm not too worried about it. We need to get here to get all the speed, which is over 300 knots by the looks of things. So I'm not too worried about it. As you can see, it's speeding up pretty quickly. I'm going to bring my throttle back to about 60%. I'm just going to keep an eye. This reading here is your ground speed. This one here is your distance to your next waypoint on your route or your next point on your route as you can see we're crossing over here what i'm going to do soon is set up my ils frequencies for runway 9 right at heathrow airport and i'm also going to calculate here when do i want to descend to 3000 feet i'm going to set my descent altitude to 3000 feet just so i can intercept the ils frequency at 9 right so i'm looking at this this is when we'll get to Heathrow Airport. So all this is around about 40 nautical miles out. You can do this scientifically. Look at your sim brief plan for your top of descent. And goodness knows what. I'm going to say once we're at this point here, maybe 8 or 9 nautical miles at this point, I'm going to start to descend just so I get down in time. Then I've got plenty of time for descent. Descend 40 or 50 nautical miles out is my suggestion. I've been flying the 146 quite often with my virtual airline, so I kind of got to know when to start to descend. So yeah, I'm going to start to descend when it gets to around this point here. How are we doing on ground speed? Okay, bring my throttle on out. As you can see, we're okay. We're just going to get there a little bit quicker. Now, on the EFB tablet, go to your charts page if you have sim uh, Navigraph. If you don't have Navigraph, don't worry, just Google uh, an approach chart for 9 right. I've got Navigraph, and it's all connected in my EFB in the 146. I've typed in EGLL here, hit the search icon. I'm going to go to approach, 
And we want, there you go, this one here, ILS, uh, runway 9 right. Click on this here. All I'm interested in is the ILS frequency, 109.50. I'm going to do this on my radio panel. Link to that down below in the description in case you don't know what a radio panel is. I'll make it active on there. Course is 8. 89 degrees. I'm also going to do this on my raid, on my uh, multi-panel. Link to that down below in the description. I've got all that set up. All that does basically. So there you go. That's my active ILS frequency 10950 and a course here of 89 degrees just to get these lines correct when we switch it to nav mode. That would be basically so we can pick up on the ILS. I've done. A, I've link uh, another uh, tutorial I did on this in the on the Series S, in fact, for the 146. So there you go. We're continuing. Our speed is still picking up. Let's bring that down to 55% or so. There you go. Just so it stops increasing and we get to over speed and the aircraft will throw us out of autopilot. Won't be good. How are we doing? on our course. While we're here, let's show you one or two of these other features. If we go to nav, it will give you some information here. Wind speed, that type of thing. All kinds of ground speed. Up bearing. Interesting information. So this is new with this FMS system. That's the distance we've got to go. Uh, isn't that just fascinating? So it'll give you all kinds of and you know, estimated time there as well. Just fantastic TNT there. So that's quite good. Gives you all kinds of information. I tend to leave it on here just so I can see where I'm going, but that nav page is also quite interesting. You do have a VNAV capability in this aircraft. I don't want to overload you, and I'm still investigating and practicing that myself. But a VNAV capability with this is itself, it does do some kind of VNAV. I also didn't show you the CDU, which is this here. It's all manual throttle, there's no auto throttle in the 146, but this will aid you. Again, I don't want to overload you, and this can be quite complex. So we won't go into that in this video, maybe in a future video. How are we doing here? This is fine, there you go. In a couple of seconds there, we'll reach that. So it's interesting, isn't it? You've got all these different options with this new FMS system. I'm just showing you a splattering amount of them. So once we get to here, we'll then start to descend. So what we can do while we're here, we can set up our 3,000 feet. I won't arm it, but I'm going to set up our 3,000 feet altitude for our descent profile. When I do arm that, I'll also arm vertical speed and start to descend us. But I don't need to do that yet. What I'll do, I'll bring you back when we're closer to our descent phase. So there you go, I thought I'd bring you back now. Because we are approaching the part of our flight. Once we get to here and this starts, we're on this leg. I'm going to start to descend, just so we're down in plenty of time. Something I have amended though, you can see here on the charts. Really, to capture the ILS, we want to be at 2,500 feet. So I've set our descent altitude to 2,500 feet. I've also press. I'll do it again now. I'm going to press my B just to make sure my altimeter is correct. You might have to do this a couple of times as you travel in the 146, I've found. I pressed it at the start, and I've had to press it again during flight. Uh, it wasn't at the correct uh, altitude. Well, the altimeter wasn't correct. It just seemed to be now. So there you go. This is counting down. We're flying along nicely. What's our speed? <laughs> Again, the throttle's roughly 56%. I'm just going to bring it down a smudge. But you know, this 146-300 variant does want to zoom along. And the passengers are loving it. That's a nice view, isn't it? There you go. If you get into grips with this, you're interested in this, hopefully this flight will be of help. I've not overloaded it, so I've not gone into the CDU features. This here 
maximum climb thrust and goodness knows what and different things you can do. I've not done that purposely because, you know, it's not helpful if you're trying to learn this aircraft for the first time. Although the manual does a great job of guiding you through that, so it could be a good idea to go and learn it at some point. Just start with the basics, like I'm showing you here. And, you know, the basics of the new FMS system. It's all very interesting, this thing, isn't it? Gives you all different kinds of information. But, you know, just follow your flight plan along. Maybe follow this flight to begin with. As I've shown you, set it up in sim brief like I showed you. And you can do exactly the same flight. Now, there's a flight in the manual you can follow. That's a good idea too. That will guide you through everything now, so just be aware. And you know, talk about that. I mean, we're sim pilots, but real pilots, they have to do a PhD worth of knowledge. Many years of training to fly aircraft, aircraft like this in real life. So learning about all the different features, emergency situations, that type of thing. Are we on our leg now? We are. So I can take it, take your time with this. I'm going to arm our autopilot assigned altitude there. Arm vertical speed here. I'm going to bring back my throttle. Press the sync button again and push your yoke forward. Going to start to descend about that much, just over a thousand feet, about one and a half thousand feet per minute. See my speed is starting to decrease anyway i want to get that to around 250 when we drop below 10,000 feet of course we're okay at the moment so I'll keep that speed up in fact i'm not too worried about it now and there you go so vertical speed arm i sync the i'll press the sync button to pause the autopilot so the rest of the configuration for autopilot will stay in it's not turning the autopilot off, which is down here. Uh, that's your AP button. That's your main master autopilot button. I've not turned it off. I've just pressed the sync button to sync. Put it into sync mode. Push my yoke forward so I've got a vertical speed set. And then re-synced it and it's synced up to where I pressed the button. Hope that makes sense. Go and read the manual for a more thorough... Uh, explanation of what the sync function does but it's a real function of the 146 how are passengers doing let's just see oh but they've all abandoned ship cabin crew emergency do I switch the emergency lights on there is a button here for emergency lights uh, probably best not doing there we go what's going on up here ah. Stop playing around, Hudson. Get back into the cockpit and keep an eye on your aircraft. <laughs> it's just a fun thing to do, isn't it? It makes it feel so realistic. So we'll take a look at our flight plan. We get into this leg and then down to here. So when we're down to here, I want to be near our assigned altitude. But on this leg now, what I might do is increase that vertical speed rate. So sync the autopilot, press the sync button, push the yoke forward a little bit and to about there. So I'm just descending a little bit quicker. Speed is fine for when we get below 10,000 feet now. If it starts to increase, I'll pull the throttle back. Seems to be okay, doesn't it? And we should be okay. Just got to double check. Keep looking at your flight plan. We've got... 16 nautical miles there, 20, about 24, 25, about 30 nautical miles just over. I think we should be fine, but I can just keep an eye on that and increase my vertical speed if necessary. Using the sync function. Just be careful not to underspeed or overspeed. Click on the card every so often. There you go. That's the minimum speed before it starts complaining, saying you're going below your minimum speed, stall speed. And when we put flaps in, that will go... Well, it should be around about the same, actually. That'll be the minimum speed, roughly, for the 146-300 variant. Ah, no problem. We're getting down. Coming down to 14,000 feet now. Keep an eye on my flight plan here. Where are we? So, yeah, still maybe 30 nautical miles or so plus to go. 
Just gonna keep an eye on the whole thing. We'll be descending below the clouds. Beautiful day in the UK. I'm on the south coast, not too far from London. So it should be similar. We should have good visibility. There it is, coming into a summer's day here. I've not been out today, this morning. <laughs> I was meant to, but yeah, never mind, I'll get out after I've done this. I was out all day yesterday, so I guess I've done my out outdoor thing. <laughs> Such a nice day though, I can't resist. Maybe go along the seafront or something. Might be nice. Right, okay, so we're coming 12,000 feet, so 15,000 feet, just going to look at my flight plan again. There we go, so we're on this leg, and then this leg, then this leg. So that's still over 30 nautical miles, isn't it? Before we get to the runway, of course, but want to get down in good time. And when we get closer, I shall put it into nav mode. I'm going to sync my heading up. There is a switch now. I did see this on a different video. One of these switches will sync your heading bug. I can't remember which one it is. There's one of these screws. There you go. This screw here. Sync heading bug. So it will sync your heading bug to your current direction. Uh, you would normally twiddle this knob here to get your heading bug up here. That's your heading bug there. That little arrow. HSI there. Right, how we're we doing? Speed, I'm going to pull back my throttle a little bit now just because we're coming down to 10,000 feet. To trying to get up to 250. We are descending at quite a rapid rate, so we'll throttle back a little bit more. We do have air brakes. I'm going to show you them just in case you don't know. I'm going to press the air brake button. There you go, air brakes at the back, isn't that fancy? <laughs> We'll be using them when we're over the runway, as you should do in the 146. I'll be showing you that hopefully later. 10,000 feet more or less. Put the landing lights on. Just tell the cabin crew we're coming in to land. Take seats for landing. There you go. Tell us cabin secure at the moment. Cabin there you go. Thank you. So we're all secured. No music playing. <laughs> There's nobody in the bloody cabin. <laughs> Never mind. We'll pretend there is. It'd be nice to see people in there. I've got to say, like you can with Concorde, but you know, small things. We're going to get down to that altitude, I reckon, in good time. So there you go. It's just. I've been flying it a lot, so I can just estimate when to start to descend at what altitude I'm at, etc. It's just a bit of practice, but if you follow this and then you know, put into practice that in a different flight to flight route you want to do, you should be able to do it. We're coming into the clouds here. Speed's fine. Just double check again. So we'll have 8 and 10. So we should be down in time. With luck. And what I'll do when it starts to level out at our 2,500 feet, I shall let it continue to drop speeds just so I can get some flaps in. And gear down. Can I pick up on the ILS? Yeah, we can. So that's the ILS there. And that's where we start to need to turn into Heathrow Airport, of course. Turning to our left. So I'll keep it in this mode. So I've switched it now to nav. Basically, it's going it's picked up on our ILS. There's a course deviation line. We can arm this. Localizer, we're <laughs> arming localizer, we'll arm glide slope later. Words do fail me when I start to record sometimes, but never mind. So we're just armed localizer. What it will do when it's this course deviation line starts to move in, it will say localizer captured and it will just guide us towards the runway. And similar, glide slope. 
Now the glide slope's below. I'm just going to move my heading. I'm going to put it into heading mode. Heading mode's over here. Move my heading book slightly to the right there, just so that glide slope line comes up a little bit. Because we're just about on it at the moment. It's starting to move up, which is all good. Speed's fine. We're getting down to our 2,500 feet in great time. Gonna press the B button again, this ultimate so there you go, it wasn't correct. Like I said, just press B every so often. Not sure quite what's going on there, but doesn't matter. Altimeter's correct now, so we have the correct reading for where we are. Correct altitude reading. Fly slope's going up. Heath rolls to our right. Probably where this chuck is down there. Nope. Yep. I don't know why that clicked off. Oh, man. Now, that clicked off for some reason, but it has captured the localizer. It just didn't say it. Oh, dear. Never mind. We caught it. We're going to arm the glide slope and capture that too. Coming down to our altitude, which is fine. So it's guiding us towards. If that, just keep an eye on this. If that clicks off, you just have to be aware of it. Could be because I pressed the altimeter again. That's the warning that we're coming down to our altitude. A little bit laggy there, but never mind. I do have Innerbills Heathrow Airport installed. Guess I better link that down in the description as well. Can create a little bit of lag still, that. But I do like it. 2500. Yep, that's fine. We're coming down. I'm going to let my speed continue to drop. I've got my throttle down to about 25%. I want to get us to flap speed. Glide slopes armed when we get on the localizer on the feathers, we should be fine. It's gonna localizer line us. Localizer captured, thank you. Glide slope, slope armed. And it will capture it in a moment once this starts to drop. Speed I need you to drop, I'm gonna put my air brakes out. I wanna be in flaps and gear down position now. So I've just got my air brakes out, show you that. Speed checked below 205, select flaps 18. Speed checked below 205, select gear down. Gear down, flaps 18 and gear down. Now watch your speed. I've got it way down. I'm going to put it back to about 50% now. I know with flaps and gear down, your speed will start to drop quickly. I'm going to select another stage of flaps. I want to get my flaps fully down, basically. So I'm in. Flap stage two in effect. Now is it lining us up properly there? It seems to be. Of course they tonight. Yep, close slope captured. And just watch your speed now. I'm gonna go to another stage of flaps. I'm gonna go full flaps. So that's flap stage three. Flap stage four. Now do watch your speed here. You don't want autopilot to kick out. Click on the card. Sorry, a lot happening. Pause if you need to. Click on the card. It's keeping our, well, our minimum speed now. We don't want to go below that. Ah, but we're doing well, people. Gear down. Full flaps. Just going to keep an eye on my speed. It's lining us up nicely for that runway. I will take it off autopilot if I feel it's not. It's just to our left slightly, but it is lining us up. It does line you up nicely, as you can see there. Bring the view down so you can see your instruments down here, what's happening with your speed and whatever. We're nicely on that glide slope and localizer, aren't we? Just need to speed up a little bit there, throttle up a little bit. I don't want it to drop too low. Once we get over the runway, I'm going to bring out the air brakes, which are proper procedures, and then. Yeah, well, okay. <laughs> Cheers! Uh, bring out the speed brake, and then when we're on the ground, press the speed brake button again for spoilers. Now, what are you doing, aircraft? There's a lot to keep your eyes on when landing, people, especially if you want to do it uh, as per the instructions. There you go. Got my speed about right. It's right on it, isn't it? 
like I said, also, autopilot's going to come off soon anyway. Don't like the angle it's got us at at the moment, but it's bringing us back. You know what? Autopilot off. I've got control of the aircraft. Just going to bring it to the left slightly. And then to the right. Just looking at my glide slope down here. Just keep that in line. I'm going to look at the puppy light soon let them guide me in. Now, slightly off angle there, but never mind. We'll get it back. Come on, Hoddison. Bit high. Bring my throttle back. Better to be high than low. And there we go, we can just bring that round. A little bit laggy there. Minimums, fine. Right. Minimums. Yeah, I know. I'm going to deploy my air brakes now. Bring my throttle back. Oh, that is it. A wee bit laggy there. Oh, nice landing. Press the speed uh, speed brake button again, it will put spoilers out. There you go. And just start to brake slowly, and we're slowing down nicely, aren't we? Just slow down quite quickly, this aircraft, so you don't need to worry about that. Press your speed brake button again, it will take your spoilers back out. And your speed brake out, we can come off this runway here. No problem, is there? No problem at all. <laughs> and that wasn't a bad landing. It got very laggy there. Very laggy. Well, that's just the way it is sometimes. It can do around Heathrow Airport, and I'm flying this at a very busy time of the day for flight sim as well. So, but we still landed okay. Now, where do I park up? Is there anywhere... Where are we? In fact. Uh, oh, there's a couple of slots down here I can slot into. I've got my throttle all the way back. I've got my flaps up, speed brake back up. And spoilers back up. Or back in, rather. I'm just looking around. Yeah, there's a couple of empty stands down here. It'll be fine. Just let these poor people off my aircraft. <laughs> so I do hope that's been helpful to you, my friends. I think I'll stop it there and just park up and let the people off. I'll give you a few features of the new FMS. Just light features and a bit of a tutorial and the cabin as well, of course. Give it a try. Give this flight a try. If you're struggling with the 146 and the new FMS. Give this one a try, load in from Simbrief your flight plan, see if that works, and let me know the results down in the comments. Do give the video a like if you've enjoyed it. Subscribe for more, many more flight simulator videos on their way, and I'll be seeing you soon.